All right, let's talk about the three things that you need for evolution. The three ingredients, if you will, for evolution. The three ingredients are variation, selection, and heredity. Remember these. I'm going to hit these a lot. Variation, selection, and heredity. Let's talk about this first one, variation. Variation, essentially differences, exists in all populations, which makes sense. I mean, even siblings, which, you know, share 50% of their DNA, are going to look similar, but not identical. All right, so some of the stuff that causes variation. Mutations, like if your you know, genetic code changes a GTG to a CTG, that will code for a bit different amino acid. That will code for possibly a different protein. That protein will possibly have an additional function or a different function or a non-function. Any one of those things. Meiosis, of course, causes variation because of that crossing over, that mixing of traits, making sure that any offspring you have are going to be a different mix than there's ever existed before. And of course, sexual reproduction. The fact that you are sexually reproduced means that you are the combination of two parents. The fact that you are a combination of two parents means that you're going to get a different mix from anywhere else. You're mixing that up. So here we can take a look at some frogs. And of course, there is variation in these frogs. Some of them have spots. Some of them have bumps. Some of them have angry eyes. Some of them have dots. And of course, uh, tongue length as well. This one here has a longer tongue than maybe those. So there is variation. Even in this population, no two are going to be identical. There's always going to be a few differences. Everybody is slightly different. A quick look around will confirm that members of any given species aren't exactly alike. Individuals can vary in traits that range from size and shape to how they act or how they function chemically. Here you can see just an example of men versus women, variation in height, whereas, uh, you know, this is the tall end, this is the short end, and a lot of people are in between, but you're going to see a lot of differences. It's very, very hard to find people who are identical. Even if they're at the same height, obviously there's going to be some differences as well. There is a lot of differences in nature. The second part is selection. A population can't keep growing. It's going to run out of something, and this is like the musical chairs, and the music stops, and there's not enough chairs. Not everyone gets to survive and reproduce. Someone is not going to be able to pass on their DNA, and it's the fittest that can. Now, remember, fittest can mean a lot of things. Sometimes it's fast. Sometimes fit is the most cautious. I mean, maybe it's the rabbit that's just too scared to go outside. Maybe that one gets to survive if this one is out, you know, dying by this hawk there. Sometimes fit is the strongest, and sometimes fit is just camouflage. Any one of those things can be the fittest. And if you're the fittest, you get to survive and, more importantly, reproduce. But survival is not random. I'm going to stress this a lot because evolution is not a random process. The mutation is random. The crossing over is random. The sexual recombination, the mixing of two parents' traits, that's random. But the survival is not. We have three frogs here. We have one fly. There's not enough. The music has stopped, and there's not enough for everyone here. Who gets it? Well, the one with the longest tongue. I don't know why this guy is like pointing him out like, dude, you're a goner. So are you. It's the, only the fittest. The variation that gives you the best advantage is the one that reproduces. So we have three types of selection that we've been talking about. Artificial selection is where, of course, nature gives you those variations with mutation, with crossing over, with sexual recombination. And humans say, ooh, that's fit. I want that. This is what resulted in like the Belgian blue cow, that over-muscled cow. Natural selection, where nature provides the variations, and nature is the one who says, oh, this is fit. This is where you get something like, you know, well-camouflaged owl, or a fast mouse, or maybe not fast enough mouse there. And those are the traits that are most beneficial for an organism in the long term. That might be a trait that allow it to eat more kinds of food, or maybe having more offspring, or something that would make an organism more cautious in a very scary environment. Any one of those things might help be fit, might help it survive. And then, of course, sexual selection. And this is where nature gives you those variations. You'll see all three of these. Nature gives the variation. But individual organisms say, ooh, that's hot. I want that. All right, I, I don't want Peter. Uh, never mind. I'm just being a peahead. Anyways, let's just take an example of my favorite punching bag, the panda bear versus the black bear. A panda bear can only eat one type of food bamboo. They're just pretty much, they're evolutionary locked into it. They will eat other types of food. But not voluntarily. They just rather eat bamboo and a lot of it all day and do nothing else. Not even reproduce because they're useless wastes of space. Anyways, the black bear, on the other hand, you know, uh, something that is its relative, can eat just about anything. Black bears will see it eating leaves and grass and berries and fish and salmon. And when you let them get into garbage dumps, they, they, they 
God, they love garbage and pop. I mean, that's just a calorie bonanza. From them, that's fantastic. So this one, the black bear has an advantage. When the pandas encountered humans, the pandas lost. And that's really the biggest reason that they're endangered today, because their environment is being destroyed. The black bear, when they meet humans, their populations pretty much aren't affected, because it's like, sweet, more food right here. I love garbage. So the black bear has the advantage, because it's not tied to one specific food. Because if the grasses go away, that's fine. It eats salmon. If the salmon goes away, it's fine. It's not berries. It's like it's not tied to it. The bamboo goes away, the pandas are screwed. And that's the issue. The bamboo forests are disappearing. Here you can see picky eaters, and they don't do so well. Because when the environment changes, they don't have as they, they don't have the tools that it takes to move on to something else. Finally, heredity. So remember, variation, selection, and heredity. Some traits are passed on parent to child. Things that you acquire, things that you gain in your life are not. I can juggle. Okay, I, I can't juggle quite that well, but my kids can't juggle, and it's not because you know uh, that like they need more practice. It's it's an acquired skill. They don't have the juggling gene. There is no juggle or like guitar. Like if your dad plays guitar, that's really cool. Maybe you'll play guitar too, but you still need to practice. It's an acquired trait. It's not in your DNA. Whoever has the best traits, whoever has the best traits that are in their DNA are more likely to survive and reproduce. It's all about the reproduction. Reproduce and pass on your better genes or you go extinct. It's as simple as that. And those new offspring, who you reproduced, should have most of the characteristics of the surviving parents. So the good genes, the good traits, pass on. Here we can see those frogs again. Remember, variation in that tongue length. But if you look, this one, and this one, and this one are dead ends. They didn't have offspring. This one does. And of course, his offspring are a little bit longer, but of course, you know, variation, some are shorter. But once again, it's trial and removal of error. This one doesn't get to pass on its traits. These do, and over time, the population evolves. Let's use an example of lions. So first off, there's variation. Some lions will be slightly faster than the others through one way or another. Selection. The fastest lions are more likely to eat, and the ones that are likely to eat survive longer if the prey is fast. So again, we're looking at fast prey. You need fast lions. The ones that are slowest, not so much. The longer you survive, the greater your chances of reproduction. That's a simple idea there. And heredity. Anyone who passed on, they have faster cubs, and that trait gets passed on. Now, just as a side note, faster lines is not without cost. Faster ones might be weaker, just, you know, fewer powerful muscles and more just, you know, straight-up speed. A trade-off has to be made. There's no free lunch in nature. So you've seen this before. I've done this example with rabbits. But let's focus on the variation, selection, and heredity. So here we have variation, some differences, some faster, some slower. Then you introduce selection. So variation, selection, where it's not random who survives. The mutation was random, the selection is not. Here, only the fastest get to survive. And again, there's that random variation, but they pass on their traits. So look at the offspring. They look like the parents. This one here, got, he got a you know, chance variation, but for the most part, they resemble their parents. Selection, non-random, but the offspring are gonna look like their parents, and so on and so forth. Remember, those three parts, Variation, selection, and heredity means that good things accumulate. Trial and removal of error. The good things stuck around. The bad ones didn't make it. Now, aside from the rabbits, you also have to think about the fact that, well, the foxes are going to be speeding up as well. They are locked in an evolutionary arms race. More on that later. So let's take a look. Just to recap. Variation. How is there variation in these beetles? Well, some are larger, some are smaller. Some are green, some are brown. Well, here's a selective process. This is non-random. Random? Not random. The bird doesn't eat the one that it can. And then heredity. You can see the ones that survive carry the genes, carry the traits for whatever it takes to survive. This is how a population evolves.